Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Oh, that's gonna... Wait, don't slander. Julie, you gotta move way back. You gotta move way back. Back. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, from the cast of Dune Part 2, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Austin Butler, and Florence Pugh, plus music from Vincent Boone, with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. Thank you for braving the storm to be here. You're all heroes. It is so wet. When dry January ends, it really ends, doesn't it? <laughs> Today is the first day of February, the hardest of all the months to spell. And uh, once again, as February arrives, for the 85th year in a row, our nation's newscasters cannot believe it. Can you believe it? It's already February. Goodbye, January. February 1st. Hard to believe January's in the rearview mirror now. Hard to believe it's already February. Hard to believe we've rolled into February. February? Can you believe That's it? That's crazy. February. Yes, can you believe it? February 1st. That is hard to believe. February 1st. Hard to believe. Hard to believe February 1st. February. Kind of hard to believe. February. Hard to believe. February 1st. Can you believe that? February. <laughs> can you can you believe it? No. February. Can you believe it? Can you believe it's already February? Can you believe it's already February? Can you believe it's February? Can you believe it's February? That's <laughs> I can't okay. believe it. We'll say that on March 1st, too. I think Amber's trying to get on Jimmy Kimmel. Is that what Yes, that what we're all going to so. do it later in, in, in unison. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Hey, Steve. Good to see you. How's everything? See you at the beginning of March. <laughs> We got hit with uh, not one but two powerful rainstorms today. There was so much water. This is in Seal Beach, not too far from here. People were surfing in the street. <laughs> I'll take a foot long Italiano. And I have to say, I cannot think of a more fun way to contract hepatitis than that. It's... And this was the scene up in San Bernardino where they even got some snow. I think there's enough snow to do a snow Sorry, angel, Dave. don't you think, Alina? I mean. I... She's right in, the, oh. right in the middle of the road. Yeah, it's okay. probably not. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I know. Oh. There she yeah. goes. What a trooper. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Who could have? I did not see that coming. Huh? Now she's a real snow angel. And way to go, Dave. The weather was no match for the uh, star power we have on this show tonight. The cast of Dune Part 2, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya. Austin Butler and Florence Pugh are here with us. Oh, what's that? They, I'm just hearing they canceled. Um, instead, I will be joined by U.S. Secretary of the Interior, Deb Holland, <laughs> and that couple from TikTok who danced to the noise from the washing machine. But that's a solid lineup. You know, President Biden was at the Capitol today, speaking at the National Prayer Breakfast. This is when God and grape nuts come together. The National <laughs> Prayer Breakfast is where they, they eat waffles and praise the Lord. My prayer, my hope, is we continue to believe our best days are ahead of us. That as a nation, we continue to believe in honesty, decency, dignity, and respect. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. That's, uh... <laughs> That prayer doesn't have a prayer, okay? <laughs> this is the kind of event that really highlights the differences between our past two presidents. Joe Biden is a practicing Catholic. He goes to church every Sunday. Donald Trump plays golf and yells at the TV on Sundays. But this is how MAGA <laughs> Teresa kicked off the prayer breakfast when he showed up in 2017. Keep in mind, this is a prayer breakfast. We had tremendous success on The Apprentice. And when I ran for president, I had to leave the show. That's when I knew for sure I was doing it. And they hired a big, big movie star, Arnold Schwarzenegger, to take my place. And we know how that turned out. <laughs> the ratings went right down the tubes. It's been a total disaster. And Mark will never, ever bet against Trump again. And I want to just pray for Arnold, if we can, for those ratings. <laughs> Amen. Well... 
It's, you know, always thinking of others. It's really beautiful. Uh, Harry Magdalene was in Washington yesterday to meet with the Teamsters Union. While he was there, he fielded questions. One of the questions was about the fact that he spent around $50 million in campaign do donations to pay his personal legal bills. And all of a sudden, Mr. I aced the cognitive test, doesn't seem to know what's going on. Do you plan to try to use campaign funds or PAC money to try to pay some of the penalties in uh, the New York defamation and fraud cases? I don't understand what. Are, are you thinking of potentially trying to use campaign money to pay some of those penalties that you, that you might incur? In what penalties? In the New York fraud case and the defamation case. I, I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, that's been proven as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but as far as the court is concerned, you did do something wrong, and it's going to cost you around $83 million. I, I see what he's doing, though. He's, I know exactly what he's up to. He's like that mob boss who pretended to be crazy by wandering around the town in a bathrobe. He's Vinny the Chin, is who he is. Trump was also asked about those red spots on his hands. Two weeks ago, he had all these red spots uh, many speculated that these uh, may be symptoms of syphilis, which was apparently news to Donald Trump. How's your, ha how's your hand? Is it, it looks like it's better now. My hand? It? Yeah, remember what happened the other day? What was wrong with it? You didn't see the photos coming no. out of Trump Tower? No. Oops. Okay. What was wrong with it? The other one. Yeah. Okay. And do you want to tell us what happened with the hand? Nothing. <laughs> Maybe it's AI. Mm -hmm, that's right. It's AI. In this case, AI stands for an infection. But <laughs> I feel like AI is going to be his excuse for everything now. Before. Mr. President, we have a recording of you having sex with a honey-baked ham. Oh, that's AI. That's... <laughs> I guess we're supposed to believe he didn't notice five big red spots are, were on his hand. Put that photo back up, because this is like, even when he is literally caught red-handed, he will not admit it. <laughs> Something very fishy is happening in Florida, a strange sound is reverberating across a neighborhood in South Tampa. This is the sound of black drumfish mating. The sound has been plaguing residents across South Tampa since 2021, but still no one has been able to confirm what it is. It could be the sound of black drumfish mating. The mating sound travels through the ground, which might explain why homes more than a mile from the water can still hear it. Is anyone else super turned on right now? Is it just... <laughs> it's very strange, but I have to say, it sounds, it sounds familiar. Let's swap out the video and listen to that one more time. Is everything okay with your meal? Did you put something in the food? No! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. You know what? HBO does have a new season of Curb Your Enthusiasm starting Sunday, so... Maybe it's for that. Today is the first day of Black History Month, or uh, as it's officially known in Florida, month. Um, and I'd like to wish a happy Black History Month to all the states whose schools are still allowed to teach it to the students. It's always funny to see corporations trying to like do the right thing for Black History Month. These are real emails that were received by members of our staff today from companies like Pottery Barn, which uh, says we're highlighting the work of our partners at the NAACP. Urban Outfitters is uh, join us as we celebrate black joy. We got one from uh, the Designer Shoe Warehouse from Bath and Body Works, which wants you to celebrate Black History Month with an exclusive candle collection. The NHL Shop would like you to join them in celebrating black history. And finally, the folks at Joanne, uh, the fabric store named after your aunt, declare one together celebrate black culture. It's the perfect confluence of needlepoint, black history, and people who sniff airplane glue for most of the day. <laughs> but it also shows how far we've come. And this is good, too. This is a, a TV channel I've not heard of before. It's called Buzzer. They show nothing but old game shows. So Buzzer is celebrating February by showing the best black moments in game show history. In <laughs> yes. <laughs> Including this forgotten gem from an episode of To Tell the Truth. Will the real Rosa Parks please Stand up. Hey, it's Mr. Carlson from WKRP. <laughs> See, now that's a double whammy, because number one, you'd think people would know what Rosa Parks looks like, especially, and also, wasn't Rosa Parks' whole thing not standing up? <laughs> 
Every year around this time, we like to uh, kind of take the temperature of the country to see how race relations are going by asking pedestrians outside our theater a simple question. And that question is, do you have a black friend? Okay? <laughs> so this is how this works. We're going to meet a person. The person's going to tell us uh, who they are. And based solely on that introduction, we're together. We're going to guess if they have a black friend. Make sense? All right. Here's our first passerby. James Sabo, Des Plaines, Illinois. James, do you have a black friend? Okay, do we think James... <laughs> so, such a sad response, isn't it? <laughs> you okay? Should we call an ambulance? <laughs> do we think James has a black friend, huh? <laughs> okay, no one does. All right, well, let's find out. Yes. How many black friends? Um... Well, just one. One of them died. Okay. Well, we're, we're off to a hot start. My name's Sean, and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Sean, do you have a black friend? Okay, does Sean from Melbourne have a black friend? Yes. yes. Okay, Every, most, most everyone says yes. Let's see. I have an Indian girlfriend. Does that count? No, it most certainly does not. Next pedestrian. My name's Jacob, and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Jacob, do you have a black friend? Okay, does Jacob give you the sense that he has a black friend? Yes! Our survey says... I have a couple, yeah. A couple? Yeah. What are their names? Um... Uh... Jordan, yeah. Do you know anyone else black on a first name basis? Not really. Not really? No. Oh, I do. My, my old roommate was actually half black, Isaiah. Hey. Hey. Yeah. I how forgot about. That? I don't know how I forgot. He came Just, around. Yeah. He's only half black, so I forgot. <laughs> These people knew they were on camera, right? They, we didn't. <laughs> okay. I like how he names the most famous basketball player in history. All right. Who's up next? Hey, what's up, man? My name's Armando. Uh, I'm from Rhode Island. Armando. Do you have a black friend? Can Armando save our planet and bring us together? <laughs> All right, Leah, they say yes, let's find out. I have plenty of black friends. How many? Um, I just made one down the street, so six. <laughs> six. Six, I can think of no better place to make friends than on, uh, on Hollywood Boulevard, but. <laughs> okay, we're headed in the right direction. Let's have a look at one more. My name is Richard Voss. I'm from Claremont, California. Richard, do you have a black friend? No. Oh, everybody says no. I think you're maybe selling Richard short. Let's find out. Is, is uh, Richard, does Richard from Claremont have a black friend? I do. How many? Seven. Seven. You had that really fast. What are their names? Uh, Darren, Jennifer, Jose, Steve, Michael, John. Oh, well, that's only six, and one of them's named Darren, but that's pretty damn good, I think. That's... <laughs> Thank you, Richard, and happy Black History Month to all. Put on down.